Now to make a graph, first I want to click and hold to highlight the two column headings and then hold the control key down and click and drag to highlight the two averages. So all I want is the column headings or titles and the averages. Then I'm going to go to insert and I want to insert a, a chart. It has a bunch of choices. I'm going to choose a column graph, the simplest kind, and there's my, my graph. You can click and drag the corners here to adjust the size of your, your, your chart if you want to do that. Position it on the page. Personally I don't like the little lines so I'm just going to click on those and delete those. You can change your chart title the axis, you need an axis title for the y-axis, for the vertical axis. So if you click on on your graph, go up to the top where it says add a chart element. Click on that. You can go to axis titles, primary vertical. Then you can type time. And then I'll put in parentheses ms for milliseconds. Notice it's typing that in my, up at the top here. As soon as I hit enter, it shows up on the, the chart on the graph. So there we are and that's good for the first for the first graph. Now if you hit control C or right click and copy it you can hit control V or right click and paste it and uh, now I'm going to change some things about this next graph. Uh, the first one makes it look like the right and left hand times are different just because the bars are different sizes. But I want to add a standard deviation error bar. So first thing I'm going to do is somewhere on this graph I'm going to right click, go to select data, and then click switch row and column. Hit OK. And now we've got two different colored bars and it allows me to enter the or standard deviation error bar for each one separately. So I'm going to double click on one of the bars or sorry, I'm going to close that. When I've double clicked on one of the bars I can go up to add a chart element go to an error bar. I want more error bar options. Scroll down and say I want a custom value. I need to specify what value it is. This pops up asking me what value. I'm going to click on the cell that has the standard deviation or you can type just type it in. Then hit tab. It goes to the negative. I'm going to click on the same value. What that means is it's going to put I, I have checked over here both I want one standard deviation above the average and one standard deviation below the average to have an error bar show that. So as soon as I have that I'll hit OK or Enter and it uh, shows me an error bar on my blue, my right hand time. Now you can adjust the, if you double click on that you can adjust the size and the, and the thickness of that line if you go to the paint bucket. The width is 0.75 points, I can change that say one and a half, you can change the color if you want. Okay, close that down and you can see the error bar much better there. Do the same thing on the left hand time. I'm going to go up to add a chart element, error bars, more error bar options, make sure both is selected, go to custom, specify the value, click on the cell that contains the left hand standard deviation, tab down, click on the same cell for the for the negative value, hit OK, and we have one there. can go to the paint bucket and again change it to uh, a different width so it's easier to see and there you have it. Now the axis down here says 1. You can change that. If I click on that number 1 and delete it, then I can go up to add a chart element, axis titles for the primary horizontal, then I can type in an axis title which uh, again would be right hand and left hand. Um, sometimes you put in some spaces between them so that you can get them to be spaced evenly. You can uh, click and drag that, that uh, label where you want it. Um, you can adjust the height of your graph if you want so that it looks looks better. You can adjust the width. Um, if you'd like to put a an outline uh, or a border 
Uh, you could have a solid line border. Uh, you can choose the color around the inside. You can choose the color around the outside if you want also with a solid line border. Um, I tend to like having borders around my graphs just so that they you can tell where they start and end. And then once you have both of these graphs you can stack them one on top of the other, you know, move it uh, and then print off your uh, your graphs and cut them out, tape them into your lab notebook. Uh, again, if you want to uh, fiddle around with the way it looks, you can adjust sizes. That's in this format plot area, so you just click on your graph somewhere. You can click on the paint bucket. You can change borders. You can put borders around your bars if you want. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can make it look a little, little nicer if that's what you want to do. Okay, so hopefully this helped you to see how to do it. Then, just one other tip to make sure that it prints right. See how this top graph is selected right now. I've clicked on it, so it's got the little uh, selection bar. So click off of it somewhere, and then when you go to print, uh, it will print the whole sheet with the data and the, and the graphs. Uh, otherwise, if you're clicked on it and you go to print, it will print just the graph. So make sure you click off of it somewhere before you print. And that's how you can analyze the, the data for this and get it to work in Excel. Hopefully this helped you out.